we're going to go with me to Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Praise the Lord. How many know the Bible says that He is the great I Am? And how many know that I am uh, going to get a little bit into what I talked about last week? What was the thing? Did, did anybody drive Highway 3 this week towards Delhi? One. Laura, did you? No, I did the back. You take the back way. Now, why do you take the back way? Because there's a lot of construction. A lot of construction. And what I taught on last week was expect delays. There's actually a sign that says expect delays. And, and, and so, you know, something in your life is just sort of the opposite of what it should be. We shouldn't be expecting delays. What are we expecting? We're expecting to see God begin to move and go forward in your life. And so, you sort of self-medicated that problem. You found another way to get there. Amen. How many know that through the Word of God, you can find another way to get there? You don't have to put up with or just sort of say, well, I guess I'm supposed to expect delays. I'm just supposed to expect it's going to stay this way. I'm just supposed to expect it's always going to be broke. I'm just supposed to expect that we're never really going to get through. The Bible says that, uh, uh, you know, that causes your heart actually to be sick. And I'll sit still, Sherry. That causes your heart to be sick. It actually causes you to become dismayed. The Bible says that Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Now you think about that. Everybody focus over here. Don't worry about the campers out in the foyer. Okay. Um, if your heart is, is, is coming into a desperate place, the Bible says that when your hope is gone, you actually become sick. Now I want you to think about that for just a minute here. What has happened in your life where it's caused you to feel depressed, sick, I can't do it, it's never going to work, what am I going to do? Well, how many know that when you open up your government form, think, oh, maybe they sent me some money, and they start asking for money, that's a quick route to making your heart feel sick, isn't it? Or when you have that 18th fight with your spouse, and you thought, oh, I thought this was going to end after today, that makes your heart sick. Or you hear bad news, or you drive by and simply gas is $1.39, and it was $1.24 an hour ago. That can make your heart sick. Now, I'm not suggesting that all of those things are going to make sickness in your body, but anything that begins to take away your hope, anything that begins to take away from what God has for you, if you ponder that and begin to expect those delays, if you don't find the right route, what will happen is you will crash. You will find yourself going... I was expecting delays, and I saw the sign, and I saw all of the symptoms, and I saw all of the problems, and I saw all the people backed up, and here I am again. Do you know, even though I preached that last week, I found myself moments from heading into that line of traffic. I quickly turned, and there was a side road, and I thought, my word, how could I have forgotten that? Sometimes God brings things in the Word of God that God wants to begin to do something in your life, and we quickly forget. It's like it's good for a Sunday morning, but Monday afternoon, it's gone. Begin, it's okay, just sit her there, Joe. Begin to set that down in your life and say, God is His Word, and it's going to be the final authority in my life, and I'm not going to get my heart sick, and I'm not going to get dismayed, and I'm not going to get confused. I'm going to stay with what the Bible says. So over here in Exodus 23, verse 25, it says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land, and I will fulfill the number of your days. Now, how can that possibly be when we hear Christians say, God gave me a miscarriage? How can that possibly be when people say, well, God put me in the hospital, preached to the guy laying beside me? How can that possibly be when we say, God took away my job because he's got a better one for me? How can that work if God said, you'll serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and he will take sickness away from the midst of you? Well, that seems pretty clear to me. He's taking it away from the midst of you, but how many know all around you there's still going to be sickness? All around you there's still going to be depression and doubt and fear. And are you expecting delays, or are you expecting to find the route that Laura did? Are you expecting to begin to say, I'm going to find the way around this because I'm not just going to put up with that? See, you see, a lot of times the Bible, you know, if we look at the word, and, and especially over in the Old Testament, God said, I will permit none of these things to come upon you. There's a difference between God committing them on you or, or, or uh, if you would, giving permission or, or if you would, 
permitting something. There's a big difference, and we're going to get into that and see that. Um, go with me to Deuteronomy 7.13. Deuteronomy 7.13. Again, the Bible says, I will love you and bless you. I will multiply you. I will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land which he swore to the fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all people. You sh there shall not be male nor female barren among you or among your livestock. How many times in our life do we find ourselves in a bare and desperate situation and go, well, well, I guess that's just what God had for me. I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life just in a barren, desperate place. How many know barren is emptiness? How many know the word barren? If you were to think about the barren, if you think of a barren land, a wasteland, right? A barren womb, nothing growing. Is your life in a situation where it's barren or there's nothing growing?